All right. So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to talk about the business of trading. And I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of going to incorporate some of the things that I've learned from working with other traders and coaching. So I'm going to ask some questions tonight and they'll just be yes or no questions. You can answer a yes question by just typing a Y in the room. You can answer a no question by typing an N in the room. Um, should be fairly simple to do. Um, and we're recording the room um, because I wanted everyone to be able to see the responses here overall. So is there anyone here tonight that is new here for the first time, never been to a hit and run candlesticks or right way options class? Evening in public, this is a public meeting, so we know we might have some new folks. Magnum, welcome. <clears throat> AP, Paula. Only one other time, all right. Chuck the second time. Trader. First time, first time today, Malcolm. <laughs> all right, well, thanks everyone for coming. Um, I don't wanna waste anybody's time. Let's kind of dig into this and truly, truly appreciate it. And feel free to ask questions. I'll try to catch them as we go along. This will be just maybe a little bit different presentation that you, than you might see in other places, but I really wanted to dig into more of the coaching idea and talking about some of the things that um, I know, I know has um, really, really um, helped other traders. Okay, so let's kind of just dig in here and, and jump right into the presentation. So, you know, one of the first things, and we ended up actually talking a little bit about this today in right way options. What kind of a trader am I? No, I got to tell you, there's a lot of folks out there that just really aren't sure what kind of trader they are. Um, when you build a house nowadays, do you have one, do you hire one person and they do the whole process start to finish? No, right? That's not the way it works. Everyone specializes. But isn't it true when it comes to trading, how many of you would admit you've tried to be kind of the jack of all trades? You want to be the best swing trader and day trader. You want to be an investor. You want, you might want to be, you might be thinking about Forex and futures and stock and options. And you're kind of all over the place. And I run into this a lot when I'm working with people individually for coaching. <clears throat> um, would anyone in here be willing to admit that the style of trading that you're doing is really stressing you out? That every day is a, is a real pressure cooker. That you're never really comfortable with what you're doing. And that um, you feel sometimes like, well, you want to quit. The Dumb Luck Trading Academy, Rusty. <laughs> well, here's one of the things I want you guys to think about pretty carefully because, and this is all going to kind of build up to how we put together this thought process um, to be a good trader. One of the things we really need to think about is how much time do you have to dedicate to trading? How many of you in this room right now listening had no idea or are really disappointed you came to trading with the idea of freedom, right? You came to trading with the idea that you could free things up, you could work less time, you could relax a little bit more, kind of control your destiny. And then how many of you have found out that what you really have turned into is someone that chains themselves to a computer almost all day long?
And how many of you would say that's not what you expected? Would you agree that's not what you expected when you came to came to trading? That you expected something a lot different. And for some of you that might be on that on that edge that you're really confused and thinking about quitting, one of the things that can help is to identify what kind of a trader you are. Now, I can tell you that I, I made a, a foray into day trading. I spent four years day trading full time and I hated it. I mean, I, I just literally hated it. It was, it was profitable, great, you know, fine, but I didn't enjoy it. I was chained to the computer. I couldn't take my eyes off. My wife or kids would walk in the room and I would grump at them. And I didn't like the person I was becoming. And what I really learned from that is that I was pushing myself to a place. I, I wasn't being compatible with the kind of trading that I wanted to be in. Okay, it, I never enjoyed it. Okay, and so I went back and reevaluated myself and I really went back to becoming more of a swing, well, a swing and position trader. And understanding what that meant to me, that I had a set of requirements that I needed to attend to, and then I actually had some time to do the things I wanted to do, the things that made me want to become a trader to begin with, right? So one of the first things I wanna ask everyone, if you're still confused on this, if, if you're in your right place, I want you to think about how much time would you like to be committing to your trading? What would be the right fit for you? Okay. And then start working toward the specialization of that right fit. And it's okay. The, the industry has kind of got everyone convinced that the only way to really make money is to be a speed trader, right? To be a day trader. But the truth of the matter is, guys, the dirty little secret out there is most day traders lose money. It's all there is to it. Most day traders lose money. And most tra day traders lose money for a long time, even when they work at it full time until they start finally getting it. They start to get it and start to make money. They will lose money for quite a period of time. Okay. And you need to commit all this time to it. Maybe swing or position is better for you. Maybe currency trading is where you want to be. Maybe you work a full-time job that's really busy and you need to be able to trade at night. It might be Forex, it might be futures. Do you want to be a stock trader or is it options? Now you can have a combination of both of those, but we want to specialize as much as possible. We want to think about our time commitment and what we really want this to be. Okay. And I've run, run into a lot of people that are trying to be something that they're not. See, when you're, when you're working in your, in your trading business and you're doing something or trying to be something that you're not, you're never comfortable. Would that be a, a fair statement, guys? You're never comfortable. You're always out of your comfort zone. You haven't found that place that makes you feel right. Okay. And so maybe we need to do a reevaluation as to what it is we're trying to do here. What kind of a trader am I? 
and then really begin to specialize into that trade, that trade um, style. Does that make sense, guys? Because when we try to fragment ourselves, we want to be this kind of trader and this kind of trader and this kind of trader and this kind of trader. We kind of become, well, for a lack of a, a better term, we're so fragmented, we're, it's almost schizophrenic, right? We turn on that computer in the morning and we dread it and we feel like we're chasing our tail all day long. We're trying to do too many things. Okay, so think about that. What kind of a trader am I? Now, the next thing to be thinking about is you decide, okay, I'm going to be this kind of trader. Now that you're this kind of trader, what does that mean? Are you going to be a counter trend trader? Are you going to be a trend trader? Are you going to be a high volatility trader? Are you going to be more of a value trader? What kind of stocks are you looking for? Okay, because we can need to continue to specialize. That style, first we know what we want to do, but now we have to start filling in the blanks for the style. What kind of trader do I want to be? How many in this room would admit that you have been trying to swing trade and time your entries at the different time frame of charts? And it does nothing but mess you up. Trying to predict or time perfect entries and perfect exits. And all you're doing is finding a whole bunch of conflict. And oftentimes, aren't you, aren't you actually ending up kind of frozen as a trader? How many trades do you miss out on because you're trying to be or micromanage your position so much? Okay, so we need to consider that. We need to decide what are we going to be. What is our style and what is the time frame that we're going to trade? Okay. And then start developing that style or that plan that fills in the blanks of who you are as a trader. Can you guys see how this, this can be a big relief for a lot of folks? When I work with people individually, sometimes I, I, I do a, what I call a get to know you call for coaching and we just talk a little bit. And it's amazing how many times it comes out right in that first call that they're trying to be something that they're not. That they'll never fit that mold that they want to be in. They need to make a change so that they can be comfortable as a trader. OK. And it's a fun process because once you finally get there, it's just like a big weight gets lifted off of you. Now I know what I'm supposed to do. Right. I have a defined place in the market where this is where I am. This is where I want to be. And we can work to become the best at that that we can be. And we don't have to focus on all the minutia around us or all the noise around us. We can focus on one thing. Anybody in here right now think that that could really improve their trading, really improve the way they feel about their trading. So I want to encourage that pretty strongly that think about that. Who am I? What kind of a trader am I? And it's okay. That's the other thing. It's okay. Just because you have friends or you may have seen that someplace somebody's all, they're all day traders or they're all swing traders or, oh my gosh, futures is the greatest thing out there. 
you know, if that's not you, it's not you. And don't try to be something you're not. Okay? Don't try to be something that you're not. You'll never feel comfortable. You'll always feel off balance. Make sense? <clears throat> Um, I agree with that, Barry, that your trading should fit your personality. You should feel comfortable in it. You should know that this is my place. This is my spot. This is where I feel the best. And then work to be the best at that that you can be. Because we can't be the best at everything, right? Just like in building a house, if you hire one person to build the house start to finish, do you think you're going to have as quality as a home as if you hire individual people with specialties to do that job? You're going to get better quality work, right? More efficient work. And that's what we need to do in the market. We need to know where we fit. Now this is a big one when I work with people in coaching because they've never really defined who they are and what kind of tolerance they're capable of handling. You know, there's people out there that try to be traders that just are unwilling to risk money. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to admit the first stuff. OK, if we're going to be traders, we're putting our money at risk, right? We have to be willing to have risk. I worked with a lady for quite some time. She was she was so frustrated as a trader and we finally got down to to the nub of it. And I said, OK, how much how much can you lose and be OK with it? She said, well, after 25 bucks, I kind of lose it. You guys think you can be an effective trader with a risk tolerance of $25? No. She she if trading was not for her. She had put herself in a position where she was going to give herself an ulcer trying to trade. She had the desire, I want to do this, but she didn't have the tolerance to risk to be able to do it. Okay, so what is your tolerance to risk? So a real simple way to kind of figure that out is if I take a trade, let's say, you know, I get this kind of comment all the time. Um, let's say you take a trade and on that trade you say, I could risk, I'm okay if I lose $200. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't write over there. Uh, that's going to be one problem with doing this. Um, I don't know if you guys can, you can't see where I write on the screen here, can you? Can you guys see that? You can't see that. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> so that's one of the problems with recording like this. But let's say you you have the ability to lose 200 bucks. Okay. And it's easy to say that. I can risk 200 bucks on one trade. But do you ever just trade one trade at a time? If you can risk 200 bucks on a trade and you say, no, normally I have five trades at a time, what you're really telling me is that you can risk $1,000 in one day. If it disappears, you're okay with it. How many in here can say that? Not that you like it. You're not going to like it. But is that an acceptable loss? Can you handle that? So you really have to think in the number of trades that you'll typically trade at one time that you can hold and how much risk you can take on those individual trades. And that gives you that total, says, okay, this is me. I'm okay here. Here's what I'll tell you is something I found out to be pretty true for most folks. 
if you take your account value, okay, your entire account, and you divide it by 2%, I want you to do that. Divide your account by 2% and ask yourself, can I lose this all in one day and still be okay? Now I'll tell you, if your risk tolerance is less than 2%, you might be in the wrong business. Okay? Because it's going to be really hard to make money if you're not comfortable with putting money at risk. Okay? Now, one of the pro one of the things you can do is work on your confidence because I know confidence after a period of time gets shaken for a trader. And then they feel like you know, every time you take a trade, I, I know I had this complex. Every time I took a trade, I, I was just sure I was going to lose money. Right? Just sure that I was going to lose money. So my confidence was shaken. I had to rebuild my confidence. And we're starting down that path here. We want to find out what kind of a trader we are. We're going to figure out what our tolerance for risk is. And then we're going to do some other things to start thinking about it. Now, let me ask you this. If you come up with a number that says that I'm willing to risk 5% of my account all at once in, a, in the market, you may be pushing too hard. Okay, and, and a lot of people don't know. They think, well, I can risk $200 a trade and they've never actually done the math and said, Gee, if I risk this much, I'm actually risking 5 or 6% of my account at every one time. I'm not comfortable with that. And they have to pull back a little bit. Okay, and I'm not talking about, you know, just throwing money to the wind here. I'm really talking about putting together a plan. This is how much I can risk. And I'm okay with that. See, would you guys agree if you're not okay with your tolerance for risk, if the risk of a trade is too much, you are off balance from the beginning of the trade. You are never comfortable with the trade. You are inserting emotion into the trade and you're gonna start making mistakes. Bad mistakes, micromanaging things. Those kind of things where you stop yourself out of a trade just before the stock turns around and goes the right direction. Should have never been a stop loss that close. But because the pressure of that trade got too big, we made a mistake. Okay, so you really need to hone in and decide what your tolerance for risk is. Because without the knowledge of that, you will always be off balance. Okay, think about it, guys, the way the market works. Now, if you look at Facebook, you look at Twitter, <clears throat> you'd get the impression that everybody's making a gazillion bucks, right? Everybody's getting rich. Nobody on Facebook and Twitter ever loses any money. Do you guys think that's anywhere close to real? Yeah, it is absolutely not real. The way the market works, guys, particularly on the trading side as a trader. It's a zero-sum game. The only way you can make money is somebody has to lose it. That means that no more than 50% of the people are ever making money in the market. How many you think can actually do that consistently? Make money in the market consistently. That is a very small sliver of the market. Okay? But don't you get the impression when you look at all these places that everybody's getting rich? It's not true. It can't be true. There's no possible way that could be true. Because the way the market works is I have to be better than somebody else. I have to be better and take the money out of their account. That's how it works.
Okay. The Raging Bull Baloney, you mean, Newton? The Raging Bull BS? <laughs> That's not the real market. Okay? We have to fess up to that, realize that we take risk, and then be willing to figure out what that risk tolerance is so that we can stay in balance, emotionally balanced. We're never putting ourselves out there to such an extent that we're putting our own money at risk because we don't know what we're comfortable with. Does that make sense, guys? Find out what your tolerance for risk is. And I, I run into a lot of people in coaching that just, they, they have no clue. No one's ever talked to them like this before. They've just been kind of running around, throwing money at the market, hoping something worked. And that's a recipe for disaster. Okay. Um, now, please, you know, make no mistake. The only way I make money is because there's a lot of people out there that do it, that's doing that. Okay. I don't want you to be one of those people. Be one of those people that do the job of trading, the business of trading. Understand the risk. Let's take this one step further. And this is something that's interesting as well, is that very few people in trading actually understand what they're trying to achieve. We all want to get rich, right? We all want to be up here at the top of the mountain. Who doesn't want to be up here at the top of the mountain? Right? We all want to be up here. And I get that. But how are we going to get there? Can we just jump to the top of the mountain? No. We got to do it one step at a time. Right? We cannot climb that mountain in one leap. That's right, baby steps. And if we're climbing a steep enough mountain, do you think we're going to move up and then slide back a little bit from time to time? Of course, and that's the risk that we're taking. Okay, that's the risk of the market. We have to define that and know, and then we've got to figure out where we're trying to go. Okay, and I see this all of the time when I work with people because they just want to be rich. Can we all agree? Can everyone in here agree? Type a Y. I want to be rich. Okay. Now, of all of you folks that are typing a Y, that you want to be rich, how many think that the definition of rich to you is very different than the person that typed a Y right beside you there? either in front or behind you. What's rich? We all have a different definition of what that is, right? Well, what, what, what number is freedom, Lee? What number gives you that freedom? Okay, so how can we achieve that? How are we going to reach that goal? Okay, now one of the things I'm going to suggest to you, if you're starting out over here on this mountain and you're down at the bottom of this mountain over here on this side you're down at the bottom climbing up it's pretty hard to see over the top of that and see that there's that next mountain right here that you're going to have to climb to get to where you really want to go right so we have to take a process obviously we don't have enough money in our account does anyone have enough money in our account you can just trade whatever you want and you don't have to worry about it
obviously we all suffer from a lack of not enough money, right? Can't trade everything we want. As long as it's not over a dollar. <laughs> okay. So how are we going to progress our account to grow? Do you guys think, how many of you right now think that you possess enough capital right now that starting tomorrow, if you can get some of these things handled, starting tomorrow, you can be rich in a year? Does anybody think that's true? Very few people are going to be in the position. We all start with a small account, right? Well, most of us start with a small account. We have to build that count, account so that we can grow to reach that point that makes sense for us. What, what is freedom for us? Okay. Let me ask you guys a question. Is there anyone in here right now that would just say, you know, if I had a profit, that would be a nice change. If I, at the end of the year, I had a profit in my account, that would be a nice change. Okay, see what I mean? That we all have a different idea what success is. Some of us want to just get to a profit for the first time. Okay. I've done a class before, and you can actually go catch the class over on my YouTube channel. It's called The Power of, well, it's, let's see, what is the, what is the name of it? Um, Base hits is what it's called, but it's kind of, it's the power of those base hits, little teeny tiny trades. Okay. You don't have to swing for the fence. Okay. How many of you in here, if you made $7,200 next year or this year, $7,200 this year, that would be phenomenal in your trading and be honest. That would be cool, right? You finally, yeah, happy day, right? Rickster says I'd be rich. Awesome. Do you guys know that $350 trades, $350 winning trades per week will get you there? $350 winning trades per week will get you there. Now, let me ask you this question on those who say, I just like to have a profit. How many of you guys have had profits well over $50 and didn't take it? Right? Can you imagine just going back on the trades where you had profits, if you'd have just taken, taken them, the, the place that your account would be right now would be much better than where it actually is. True? Is that a true statement? If I had just taken profits? Okay. So when we talk about goals, we have to think about the progress. How are we going to get where we need to be? What is a reasonable goal for us? Is it reasonable if you have a $5,000 account that you're going to be rich next year? Probably not. A joke that I like to say is if you trade like that, you're more likely to be living in your mother's basement because you've lost everything if you trade like that. Awesome, Twinkie. Three goals today. That's awesome. So think about what you are trying to achieve and put that down on a piece of paper. Can you guys see what I'm trying to help you do is develop a plan? An idea of this is who I am. This is how much I can risk. This is where I'm going. 
Okay. And then we have to build that process on how we're going to get there. That starts in thinking about these goals. What is a winning year for you? Now, by the way, if you say, hey, three base hits a week and it's 7,200 bucks, okay, great. And that's going to be great for you. Do you have to, can you beat that? Yeah, of course. You can do better than that. But isn't it true that when we plan that way, we're actually planning for success? Think about that. If I just told you guys right now, $7,200, your goal is $7,200 and you have that really small account. How many of you can even see that far that you could achieve that? I mean, we're all, sh we're all trying to do that anyway, right? I want to profit this year. But isn't it easier when you break it up and say, look, I, I'm trying to get 100 bucks a week. I'm trying to get 150 bucks a week. That's a big difference, right? That's something that I can see and I can achieve. Okay, if you have a bigger account, you know, just do the math. All right, it's, it's no big deal. 500 times, three times a week, you're gonna make 96,000 bucks. Okay, put a plan together that says, this is what I'm here to do. One of the things that I do, guys, is on my desk every single day. I, I fill it out on Sundays when I'm preparing for my week. Every single day, I have my goals in front of me. I know what I'm trying to achieve, what I'm here to do right now. Because it not it true when the markets, everything's going on and the news is flashing and charts are flying by and all this stuff is going on, isn't it easy to lose focus as to what we're supposed to be doing here today? What are we supposed to be doing? If we have that, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for that 150 bucks. I'm here for 500 bucks. I'm here for that thousand bucks, whatever that is. Now we have a purpose. We have a focus as to what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Are we wasting time looking at stocks that we can't afford to afford to buy? We're wasting time. Are we wasting stocks that we look at the stock and it's already up 25% in two days? Are we wasting our time? We're not buying that. There's too much risk to the stop loss. We can't take that much risk. It's a waste of time. Focus on what your job is today. And how are you going to achieve that and reach that goal at the end of the week and then at the end of the month. Okay, can you guys see how breaking this stuff up in little tiny pieces helps you see, hey, I, I think I can do that. And isn't it true if your goals are like this, how many really good stocks do you need every week? Do you need to be chasing around everything in the market that's moving? It does work, doesn't it, Rickster? Let me ask that question. How many of you from Hit Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options that are here right now that would say, once you put a plan together, it changed your trading world. Everything changed. You calmed down. You were able to focus. You were able to put things together. And you started to make money in the market. If we're just out there winging it, we're not going to get there. Okay. So <clears throat> what's a goal look like? Well, we all have to realize that we're going to start in one place. We're going to start here and we're building to where we really want to be. Okay. Lee said $2,500 a month. That gives her freedom. Okay. Now, Lee, put together a plan. 
What size of an account do you have to put together with the tolerance of risk that you have that's going to allow you to make $2,500 a month? Okay, and if we know that, now we can start working toward it. Right? We can start working toward it. If this is success, and by the way, what happens with most people where they really think success is initially isn't where success really is once they get there. Now they see further. I think I can do better. I think I can do more. So this stuff is always changing and evolving. But keep in mind, if we have that number out there, we can backward plan that and figure out how am I going to get there? Right? We're all a work in progress. We all have to plan our course forward. If we try to go from point A to point B all at once, what happens most of the time? We disappoint ourselves, we fail, and we quit. I've given the example many times. I, I used to build houses, for those of you that don't know, and, and you get handed a, a, a plan for a 6,000 square foot house. And I'm telling you guys, the details in that are unimaginable. If, you th if I had to think about, from start to finish, all of the details that go into that, getting that from the day I get the plan and cut the ground to the day I hand the keys to the owner, it would make me absolutely insane. The only thing I could do is break it up in little pieces. Okay, what's the first step? And then what comes after that, and after that, and after that. And you start putting that plan together, anything is possible. Okay? But we can't get to that brand new house by just leaping there. We've got to take it one step at a time. And the same thing is true in trading, guys. One step at a time. First, we have to start showing a profit, right? Then we have to start thinking about the growth of, the, of the, the account. What's it going to take to get me to where I want to be? Okay. So think about that. It's okay to start where you are. And I know it's frustrating. When I first started trading, guys, I was in my 20s, mid-20s. I started with a $2,500 account. That's the most I could put together. I had a building business. I had a, had a house, wife, two kids, and employees. 2,500 bucks was a stretch. But slowly and steadily, I built that plan to get me where I am now. Trading full-time, been doing it for 15 years, put two kids through college. Trading. The only way you can do that, guys, is have a plan. You gotta have a plan. How are you going to get where you want to go and start working incrementally toward that goal? Okay, so I want to ask everyone, what does success look like to you at the end of this year? And be realistic. If you have never made a profit before, what does success look like to you this year? Wouldn't the first thing, step to be, is try to get profitable? And what does that mean? That means when we get a trade and we're in profit, what should we do? Take the profits. How many of you guys have ever turned winning trades into losers because we wanted more? Yeah. And if we don't have a goal, if we don't know what we're trying to achieve, it's easy to do that right? But if we know our goal is 50 bucks three times a week, man, when that 50 bucks shows up, you better take that profit, right? That's what you're here to do. That's your job. 
right now we're in the growing the count phase, the consistency phase. Working to build that consistency in your trading. By the way, guys, if you ever want to be full-time as a trader, anybody in here have the desire to be full-time as a trader? Okay. The only way you can do that is build consistency in your trading. Because trust me, your bills come every month. And your spouse is not going to like it if, well, for three months, I just don't make any money. I suck. I In fact, I lost money. That doesn't work. You're not going to make it as a full-time trader. You've got to figure out a way to bring consistency into your trading. You've got so much to cover every month. How are you going to do that? You do that by hitting small goals and repeating it over and over and over. That's the work in progress, one step at a time. One trade at a time. And by the way, guys, I say this all the time. I am only as good as my next trade. I could have 10 winning trades in a row and then blow it so bad on the next trade, I lose everything that I've made. How many of you guys have ever done that? Have periods of success in your trading and then just absolutely bomb it and lose it. We're only as good as our next trade and we have to maintain that consistency. We can't get too big for our britches. We're supposed to be getting $150 a week. That's our goal. And we get in a trade and it jumps up 350 bucks. And we get too big for our britches. Hey, I'm going to get rich all at once here and turn that trade into a massive loser and lose a couple of weeks of goals because we just didn't take the profit. Or take a trade that just has too much risk, more than we can handle, and then not set a stop loss because, guys, can we be consistently winning in the market or have any consistency if we let losers turn into really big losers? We can't do it. You'll never be successful in trading unless you cut those losers off. You cannot let the loser run. I'm telling you, you can't. It'll wipe out too many winning trades and you'll miss all of your goals. You got to close it. You got to get rid of it. Question I ask people in RWO all the time, is it going to be easier to get your money back fighting a stock that's not doing what you thought it should do? Or is it going to be easier to find a good trade to get your money back? It's much, much easier finding a good trade to get your money back than fighting a bad trade. Okay, but we've all done that, right? Where we've failed to put in a stop loss and we've turned that it's supposed to be a really quick swing trade, turned it into a long-term hold because doggone it, I just can't, I can't, I have to be right on this trade. Nope. If you want consistency, you got to stop that. Okay, so we got to get a plan. We've got to get a process and we've got to get it done. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about work ethic a little bit. Okay. If you don't know how to use your brokerage platform, whose responsible is it to learn that? That's right. Why would you go to the market and risk your money in the market when you're not familiar with your brokerage platform. I don't know how to set that order. I don't know how to do that. Does that even make sense? Be kind of like handing a loaded pistol to a toddler, wouldn't it? Nobody would do that. 
But isn't that what we're doing? If we don't know how to use our brokerage platform, if we don't know how to use our charting platform, we've got to do the work, okay? This goes back to the very beginning. What are you willing to do to make this happen? You have to make a commitment that I'm willing to do whatever it takes. If I have to work overtime, I have to work overtime. If I have to sit here and study for an extra hour, that's what I do. Because it's my business and no one's going to do it for you. Okay, so that work ethic has got to be on point. You have to get the job done. There's no excuses here. Right? Who can you complain to if you're a business of one? You. It's on your shoulders. Okay? So make sure, guys, you have a willingness to do the job. What's it going to take? And it's different for everyone. You know, I'm kind of thick-headed. I'm pretty stubborn. Ask Mike Peterson. He knows. I'm kind of a stubborn guy. I have to bang my head against the wall about a dozen times before I go, you know what? I probably should stop doing that. It's starting to hurt. It's not being very, very productive. Okay? We all are different people. Right? So we have to figure out what it is that's going to take for us to get the job done. If I have to study the extra hour, I will. If I have to put in the extra time, I do it. Because for me, the freedom of being full-time as a trader is worth every bit of it. Okay? It's worth the effort. And don't shortchange yourself. Okay? Success is built with a lot of hard work, and you just got to get in there and do it. It's the ugly, nasty stuff that we don't want to do. You can't build a house without somebody that's willing to dig a ditch. Okay? We're the only person in our business. We got to do the work. Okay? So find out what it is that you're lacking on and get to work and get it fixed. You know, it amazes me. People will spend more time and money to learn how to swing a golf club than they will to be a good trader. Isn't that true? We'll do almost anything to be good at some sport or something like that. But boy, don't ask me to pay for a class to be better at trading. And, and don't, I, I, I'm never going to admit that I need some help. Guys, I admitted I needed help early on. I worked with a, a mentor, a coach, for several years. I wanted that accountability because I knew I wasn't going to improve without it. I wanted that accountability. You know, memberships to like Hit Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options can help you along that path. For anyone that's new here, and this is just not, this is not to sell anything, but I'm going to ask everyone that's from Hit Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options. The way we do things, has it helped you get on that path faster? Sometimes spending a little bit of money for the education and the help makes a difference. Okay. Sometimes we have to get the help. We just have to fess up. Hey, I need some help. And that's okay. If it puts us on the right track and we start making money, it's worth it, right? So figure out what it is that you need and get to it. Get it done. Okay. <clears throat> now this chart, this isn't going to work out at all because the way, Ray, I originally thought about this is I was going to draw all over this, but this isn't going to work the way I'm recording this. So hopefully I can explain this well enough. 
One of the things that most traders fail on terribly is they don't keep records of their trading. Okay. And that's one thing that I just see and and, and believe me, I was I was stubborn. I didn't want to keep track. Okay. But how can we grow as a trader if we don't learn from our trading? If we don't learn from our mistakes, if we don't even bother to record them and go back and review and say, well, I got to stop doing this. You know, it's a real simple thing to get from a broke trader to a winning trader. We have to figure out what works for us, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Now, that sounds almost kind of stupid to say, but it's true. The problem is most people don't even know because they're not recording anything. They're just flying by the seat of their pants. Have you ever seen any business that doesn't record their business? Yep, I've seen them. They're failed businesses. They're the businesses that go out because they don't know what works and what doesn't. They don't know what's profitable and what's not. We have to start recording our business. We have to learn from our mistakes. Our account is our report card. Okay, and it doesn't lie. We can lie to ourselves. How many of you guys have been losing traders, but every time a friend asks you, how's the trading going? Oh man, you know, I, I just nailed this trade the other day. And, and that might be true, you nailed the trade and man, you made a bunch of money on it, but everything that come before and after that just sucked. Took everything away. Your account's not growing. Your account is your report card. Are we getting success? Okay. Now, if we have goals set, and this was where I was really going to mark this up. This was going to be really cool. <laughs> if we have goals set, we can track. Did we hit our goal this month? This week, did we hit our goal? Are we going to be able to make monthly goals if we keep missing weekly goals? No, of course not, right? Are we going to be able to reach our, our success, what, this, what we want to achieve this year, if we consistently miss on our monthly goals? No, of course not. Okay. Thanks for doing that, Jim. I appreciate it, posting that for examples for folks. We have to record our business and we have to keep track. Am I achieving what I intend to achieve? If I have a goal out here, my account needs to be up here at the end of the year. But if I am missing week over week and I'm not making my goals, I need to change something, right? Now, wouldn't you rather change that? Wouldn't you rather find that out right now rather than wait to the end of the year and say, yep, this, this year sucked. I wasted this whole year. You've got to do it as we progress. Okay? We have to hold ourselves accountable and say, did I achieve something? Did I make it? It's okay, you're gonna miss some goals. I miss goals. But what I try to do once I evaluate that is get right back on track. Okay, because if I miss so many goals, okay, I own my own business, but you guys think my wife can't fire me in about half a heartbeat? Buddy, you're not making the bills you got to pick up your hammer and go back to work. You're fired. Is this making sense, guys? We have to track our progress. Sometimes it's going to be disappointing. Okay? But we have to track our progress. <laughs> She's mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have to track our progress. We have to keep track of where we're going because if we start steering off course, we're never going to reach our annual goal unless we get back on course, right? I told a story in Rightway Options. I used to be a, an elected official in, in the city of Everett, Washington. I was on the city council there. I, I served four terms there. And for most of that time, I served on the budget committee um, in the city because I just was kind of into that stuff. And one of the things we created, and I'm not going to take credit for this, we had a great budget director. He was almost, a, he, I kind of put him up there. He was a budget genius. But what we did is we took every department and we broke it out. Okay, here's your budget for the end of the year. This is where you need to end up. And that meant that we could divide that out over 12 months. And every month we did a review of every department. Are you above or below your target? If you're above your target, you better hurry up and get back into place. Otherwise, we're going to start asking you for cuts. You got to figure it out, right? We have to stay on task. Same thing is true in our trading. Okay? We cannot have what I used to call yo-yo trading. One of my first classes I ever taught here was confessions of a yo-yo trader. Because literally, guys... My account would just yo-yo. I'd go way up when markets were good, and I'd lose it all back. And I'd go way up when the markets were good, and I'd lose it all back. Is, is that, is that going to get me to work so that I can be full-time as a trader? Is that ever going to work out? Feast or famine? No, it's not. You'll never make it as a full-time trader doing that. You have to avoid those big downswings. You have to recognize what's going on. The market shifted. Something's changed. I have to reevaluate. I have to adjust. I can't let this continue. If I keep this losing streak going here, I'm out of business. My wife is going to fire me. Okay? So I want to encourage everyone listening here to start taking that seriously, to really start digging in and evaluating this. And I can tell you guys, I'm almost finished up here. I can tell you guys for the folks that go through this process that actually do these things, they start to see their trading improve. They start getting on track. They start enjoying the job of trading. It's not a big stressor. They know what they're here to do. Right? Isn't it easier when you sit down and you know this is what I'm supposed to do this week? It's easier. It's not as stressful. I know what I'm here to do. Okay? And people who get on this track start seeing that improvement and they start seeing that improvement pretty quickly. They start recognizing where they were over trading or maybe they were under trading. They start recognizing how important it is to take profits. I can't be a consistently winning trader if I let greed prevent me from taking a profit. Got to take profits and we got to do it consistently if we're going to be consistently profitable traders. Okay. So I want to encourage everyone to think about this carefully. Don't let a class like this just kind of breeze right by and you don't do anything with it. Start these steps. Go one step at a time. Who am I? What really fits me? Start building that plan. Think about what your tolerance for risk is that puts you in control so that you're not always emotional or feeling out of control in your trading. What are your goals? 
What do I have to do this week to achieve my goal? What's required of me? Realizing that every day is an opportunity that we are a work in progress. Every day is a work in progress to move forward to achieve our goal. Okay? If that requires you to do a little bit of extra study to move forward, get it done. Don't waste another day. Get it done. Spend the entire weekend. Get it done. Okay? And then start recording that track, that, that business so you can start seeing whether am I, am I on track or do I need some help with this? Do I need some help to stay focused? Get the help. Don't languish in the dark forever. Get the help so that you can start getting on track. Okay? And I got to tell you guys, this will make a massive difference in your trading. Okay? It will make a massive difference in your trading. So start working on that. Uh, Dave, yes, this is recorded. Okay. And I will get this rendered as, as soon as I can and, and we'll get this posted. All right, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. It'll be available for everyone to see. Okay. Because I know for a fact that if you don't follow these steps, you're just going to wander in the darkness for a long, long time. Get the help, get the focus, whatever it has to do. If I have to work an extra hour to get my plan together, get it together. Be prepared when you come to the market every morning. I see this all the time. People wake up, they stumble into their office chair, they turn their computer on. Okay, I'm, re I'm here, I'm ready to trade. No, you're not. You're not ready to trade. You are going into competition with some of the best people in the business. And if you're still trying to wake up and you haven't looked at charts or know what you're trying to achieve, you are not ready to trade. You're going to lose your money. Don't be that person. Hold yourself to a higher standard, okay? So I hope you guys got something out of this. You, know, you guys are talking about, is there anybody, TC2000 is something I highly recommend. If you guys are um, looking for a charting platform, I just highly recommend it. It's just... It's just a phenomenal piece of software, okay? Cost you a little bit, but seriously, uh, what it costs you for a whole year is one good trade, okay? It's worth doing, okay? So here's a link. That link will save you some money on TC2000. If you don't have it, go get it, okay? Invest in your business. Do the things in any business, guys, as a, as a home builder, do you think I ran around with crummy tools? Am I going to be productive? Am I, is my crew going to get stuff done with a bunch of crummy tools, half broken tools? No. Good quality tools help your business be successful. Get a good quality tool. TC2000 is that good quality tool for me. Um, Al, for my brokerage, I use two. I use Thinkorswim and I use Tradehawk. Awesome. I want to ask you guys for one other favor. I'm not trying to sell you nothing or anything. I want to ask you guys for one other favor. If you have never been to the Right Way Options page, YouTube page, I want to encourage you to go to Right Way Options on YouTube and become a subscriber. Okay? 
Become a subscriber so you can keep track. If at some point in time you think we can help you, that you've progressed to the point where you need some help, you need some extra education, you need something, you need that mentor, give us a look. Okay? We want to help you do that. All right? We don't sell hype. We don't sell baloney. Okay? We sell good quality trading with a good set of rules and a plan. Keeping it steady. Thank you, Malcolm. Keeping it steady. So simple stuff like that can make a difference. Remember, I'm only as good as my next trade. If I break my rules on the next trade, what I get after that, I deserve. Okay. I want to say thanks to everyone for being here tonight. I hope you got, I hope you got um, some good information here. Something that can really, you can really grab a hold of. Hopefully, it made you think a little bit and say, "Hey, I really, I, I can change. I can, I can be better." That's what I want you to be thinking. I want you to be pushing that forward. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you took something away from here that was valuable. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome evening. I want to wish you all of the best. And you guys will see me right back here bright and early tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. I'll be right here at my desk again doing the morning prep video. All right? Everyone take care of yourselves. Be safe. Good night, everyone.